Hannes Hrobler and Richard Leake's victory on the Mafeking King 500 brings Nissan's tally of wins up to six for the 2004 ABSA Off-Road Championship. And it's a triumphant return to special vehicle competition for Gary Bertolt and Siegfried Rousseau in the Advent Soft Bat. And there's no stopping Alfie Cox and Ralph Pitchford as they romp to their fifth successive Class D win in the Arnold Chats Cars Nissan. The South African Off-Road Championship is proudly brought to you by ABSA. Speak to ABSA first for fast, flexible vehicle finance. We can also structure an asset finance solution to suit your business needs. It's really never been easier. Round 6 of the ABSA Off-Road Championship was held in the Mafeking area recently. The Northwest Province capital is a vibrant hub and a major tourist attraction with abundant wildlife, history and culture topping the bill. Mafeking means the place among the rocks, a name given to the area by the Baralong chiefs in 1852. Leisure activities are well catered for and the area has been home to the Mafeking 500 for four years. This year's event was sponsored by Atlas Copco, O'Hagan's, First Prize Trophies, ATS Motorsport Supplies, Total and the Northwest Parks and Tourism and attracted 31 production vehicle and 28 special vehicle entries. With the championship delicately poised in all the classes, it would be critical for the contenders to finish and amass as many additional points as possible. The special vehicle category saw the return to competition of brothers and arch rivals Gary and Bevan Bertholds in the Advan Soft and iTech bats respectively, and the much improved Atlas Copco bat of Henry Castain and Renia Euster. All the artillery the opposition could muster was ranged on the proudly South African Nissans in Class T and the Arnold Chats Cars Nissan Hardbody in Class D, which had dominated the production vehicle category all season. Krobler and Leek had led all season, but their advantage had been whittled down to one point and they were now under threat from teammates De Villiers and Jordan, Cox and Pitchford and Team Ford's Woolridge and Schulthammer. Reigning production vehicle champions Frobler and Leek and teammates De Villiers and Jordan had each won two races and finished in the runner-up position on one occasion each. Cox and Pitchford had shown the rest of the Class D field the way home on four successive occasions and were in line to win the class championship and to challenge for the overall championship too. Three successive class wins at the start of the season have given Hugo and Father Yacht de Brain the edge in the Class E battle. The Toyota pair is likely to win the class championship for the second time. Atang Mahekaneni and Bucks Carolyn have a comfortable lead in the special vehicle category, but the total Jimco pair cannot let down its guard because, with three events to go, there are at least three crews who can pull off a surprise win. Achechaneni has won three events and Carolyn two, and based on current form, are the likely special vehicle champions. The prologue to determine starting positions for the main event was won by Hrobler and Lee, with Manfred Schroeder and Jack Peckham topping the Class D leaderboard, while Chris Visser and Jaffe Badenhorst were the fastest Class E qualifiers. It went very, very well. Um, it was very fast. It was like a rally stage. Um, we had one or two mishaps uh, in a corner that we were too fast, um, but we enjoyed it. And uh, I think uh, the route uh, tomorrow will be, as if it's fast like this, uh, I think we've got a good chance to, to win it. Oh, I'm very unhappy. You know, the pace was very, very fast, and here the, the dust is terrible, so it's imperative to get a good start. And uh, within 20 k's of the, from the start, we caught up to uh, the one Nissan, and they just wouldn't move over. We, Jumped on the screamer all the time on the hooter. They saw us at the, the 90 degree turns to try and get past them. They just wouldn't let us pass in the dust. So consequently, we sat behind them for the last 20 k's, and I think we've lost three minutes, maybe even a little bit more. You know, so tomorrow is going to really be an uphill battle. Um, but I'll have a chat to them a bit later. I don't think now's the right time because I'm not feeling on top of the world. But I'll have a chat to them later and just see what the problem was. So, it's certainly not in the spirit of off-road racing. We have rules in place. 
that there's a faster car behind you, he's supposed to let you past. And uh, quite clearly we're much faster. If they did have a problem, even more so that they should have moved over. They didn't move over, so it's effectively uh, puts us in a bit of a car park to start tomorrow morning, which is a big problem in this dust. Yes, our plan was today to go as fast as possible because we know tomorrow is going to be a problem with the dust. Um, we had a good, well the first 26 k's were, we had a good run, but unfortunately we got behind a sandmaster. And every time we get a bit closer, you know, he went off the road and then he had to back off again and he catch him again, so we lost a couple of seconds at the end. The car went beautifully, um, no problems at all, it handles unbelievably on the stuff. Um, I prefer sort of this more faster route than the uh, rooftop events, so um, I also enjoyed it. This kind of terrain is very nice. As I said to you last time, uh, Lesotho is also nice. It's a much slower race. This race is fast, very dusty. I had the bad luck again. I was seated in a position where I caught up the competitor in front of me and uh, I had to contend with about four kilometers, five kilometers before the end, before the end with his dust that obviously slowed me down a little bit. But other than that, the, rain is very, the terrain is very nice. Uh, it's my kind of race and it's not too rough, the vehicles should last. I don't know what the second loop tomorrow would look like, but I think uh, if we look at the happened today, it was uh, quite enjoyable. And this is the kind of race I enjoy. Yeah, yes sir. Nee, ek sê vir jou, ek vir dag toe skom, ek sê jy sê ons in my hometown, nou nou in my hometown, so ek hoop het gaan goed man. <laughs> ek geniet het om in die terrein te rijd, baie lekker. Lekker vannig en ek is bykie reisies gestaan, so ek sien baie uit na morgen. The objective was to go out as hard as we could, and obviously um, take the top 10 place and obviously win the class, you know, for, to start tomorrow. I remember last year it was very dusty and you needed to be near the front and uh, so it was flat out. As uh, Shinazuka will say, maximum attack. We did it, but I haven't driven since Lesotho. So, since Lesotho, so it took me five or six kilometers to get used to the, the vehicle sideways and everything. And but once I was into it, but it's very fast, so it wasn't too difficult out there. Not many obstacles, but all in all, I thought it was really nice time trial. Versus the V6 again, we need a little bit more grunt down the long straight. Um, you almost crouch in the back of the seat to try and get this thing to go, but uh, unfortunately it's a four-cylinder. You shouldn't forget that, and uh, it's been good. I think the cars kept me, uh, kept me going well. We only had power steering for five kilometers into the into the route, and um, 15 k's after that I could still hang on, but I mean after that it just gets so tiring, and uh, it was difficult to to stay on the route because it knocks the steering out of your hands, but. We'll, we, we, we'll try and fix it and uh, obviously we're going to be in the dust tomorrow. The special vehicle category saw Noble and Hope outqualify the Class A field by a wide margin, where Smith and Lima were the fastest in Class A, with Class B championship leaders Taylor and Deshillane the only Class B crew in the top 10. The vehicle is great. I mean, it's got all the speed for all the straights that we had and all the tights, it just takes it out all the time. The condition was great. It was nice. Nice. Very nice. I like this. I'm not looking for a first, maybe a top tip. Yeah, I think it was great. It was just uh, very, very fast. Um, I think we just need to do a little bit of mapping on the car, make yeah. it a little bit quicker. Um, it's running a little bit rich. It doesn't seem to want to pull through. And this is just really fast stuff. It's great. We never had any dust, so we're great. Uh, the route was very fast. I really enjoyed it. Uh, one section, it was a 3.5k loop uh, before you turned, and it just goes by in like two minutes. It, it was really fast. I thoroughly enjoyed it. The car's excellent. A tongue drove like an absolute champion. Uh, we didn't wrong slot. Our Odo stopped working after 22 kilometers, so I just read it off the book. The marking was good. Um, we've got to keep, we've got to be wide awake here, and I'm really looking forward to the race tomorrow. Well, the prologue was was excellent. We had no problems. It, uh, I think it was fast, very fast, and uh, the marking was excellent. So I think everybody was was going flat out. But obvious with us now with the new changes on the car and the extra horsepower, I'm glad we did it because today I think the, the, the horsepower is going to count uh, everything for tomorrow. Uh, but I think the guys that is going to read something into this, I think the whole route tomorrow is going to look like that's going to make a big mistake because this place can get very nasty. But we'll be there. We're going to chase this youngsters. It was quicker. It was very quick. The only thing we had a problem with... Uh, there was uh, new markers and old markers, so that confused us a bit, uh, whether we were on the right route or the wrong route. But other than that, uh, no problems, ran without the intercom, and the car was fine. Um, hopefully we set a good pace, a pace and uh, we'll take it from there. Uh, unfortunately, we, the markers changed color and we uh, took a wrong route. I ended up starting behind my brother, 
and uh, doing an extra 12 kilometers of the route today we went through the same marshall point twice so it's a bit of a rough day i think we lost about seven minutes and we're going to have a lot of work to do tomorrow to catch up